Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regime to Decom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with an update concerning the launch of NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 11 series, 20 series, whatever it ends up being called series. And this comes to us from the maker of the fans of the NVIDIA graphics cards. Now, this uh, company provides fans for, let's say, EVGA and other coolers. So... They do, of course, have some level of insight into the release date of when uh, new GPU launches are going to take place. The chairman, Su Wen Fang, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, has indicated that the company's profits should soar during an interview with DigiTimes, and this will take place in the third quarter of this year. This essentially means that we do appear to be on the same track that we've indeed seen from other rumors so it looks like the release date of these graphics cards is going to happen late july to possibly early september at the very latest of course there's a lot of uh, questions regarding what the names of the cards are going to be what technology we're going to be seeing in them uh, improvements for example in performance and even the pricing information but we probably won't have to wait much longer until we get solid information regarding those questions at the very least so it's good that we have yet another source which confirms the release date or at least the window of these new cards while we're keeping on the subject of uh, leaks and benchmarks let's move over to vega 12 that's right vega 12 now Obviously, the name does not imply that it has 12 compute units. Instead, it's simply the code name for the GPU, just like Vega 11 or Vega 20 or Vega 10 or what have you. This card, from what we can tell, as we don't know all of the specifications yet, is indeed intended for the mobile market. And we have an entry in Ashes of the Singularity. The chip name so far, which is obviously a code name, is 698000. Because we don't know any of the specifications of the card, it's very hard to ascertain what the performance numbers actually mean. For example, it could be running at a considerably lower clock speed than what the final retail samples might be. But still, it's nice to see that we're seeing yet further entries into the Vega lineup of desktop cards. So there's actually been another fascinating entry on the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark database. And a couple of you actually messaged me about this uh, late last night after I put out yesterday's video. This concerns what appears to be a Vega 20 7nm GPU, which is going to be the Radeon Pro Vegas. Now this is fascinating for a couple of reasons. This does open up the possibilities of, well, releasing the 7nm Vegas to the more mainstream sections of the you know community and also it could possibly mean that we might actually see a gaming variant of 7nm vega after all previously at computex 2018 just as a quick refresher lisa sue had told us that yes 7nm would be coming to gamers in the you know future she didn't give a specific date and at the time it had been implied that it would be vega well you could certainly read between the lines and think it was Vega. After all, she had just conducted several minutes of discussing Vega and then said that 7nm would be coming to gamers. So the logical thing to do, of course, would be like, oh, okay, well, obviously she doesn't need to ref uh, uh, infer anymore that, you know, it's going to be Vega. It's implied that it will be Vega. After that, it went a bit silent and the press were asking AMD, uh, did you mean Vega or did you mean Navi? And the silence was deafening. As you can probably imagine, AMD didn't want to give away those future plans. So speculation was that no, because of the release of Navi in 2019, gamers would not see Vega. Instead, Vega would be relegated, 7nm Vega would be relegated to HPC and, you know, a deep learning kind of workloads, where according to AMD's own specifications, we're going to be seeing around a 35-40% improvement over the current Vega for those tasks and applications. So what do we actually have which is of interest when it comes to Vega 20 and these benchmarks? Well, there are two distinctive entries in Ashes of the Singularity uh, benchmark database, which indicate that AMD may be working on a couple of different Vega 20 variants. The first of which we pretty much knew about. It is the 66 a000 and it's a vega 20 graphics card which most likely we did see a version of at the live demo at computex 2018 it might be slightly different silicon but it's essentially the same card and it's going to be part of the flagship amd radeon instinct lineup which of course is going to release later this year the fact that we see an ashes of singularity uh 
database entry is not too surprising. I mean, yes, it's kind of weird they're testing it with a game, but still they're probably just testing it with DirectX 12 workloads and just kind of tweaking the darn thing. So it's not that unusual overall. What is considerably more of interest, and as I said, the main purpose of the segment of this video is the Radeon Pro Vega 20. Now, from what we can tell, this is going to be more in the prosumer market. And of course, AMD have released various Radeon Pros in the past, Pro Vegas in the past. So it's curious that we see a 7NM entry because it had not been hinted at by AMD at the Computex event. And once again, this does possibly leave us with the logical conclusion that we could also see another Vega variant, which would be for gaming, the Vega 7NM gaming version. From what we know, the specifications of the card are very similar to its 14nm counterpart. It has still 4096 shaders. It still, uh, of course, uses the same architecture, perhaps with a few tweaks here and there, as particularly when it comes to the compute oriented sector and deep learning, that type of thing. But it has improvements in HBM2, which I'll get to in just a second. And of course, because it's built on 7nm, power consumption is reduced and clock frequencies are said to be higher. What's higher? Well, honestly, AMD haven't told us yet. We can only assume that they're going to be running several hundred megahertz higher than the uh, than its predecessor. And hopefully one of the issues with the original Vegas was that they got really, really, really hot. Now you could somewhat actually counter this by undervolting the GPU, which would actually ironically mean that the clock frequencies would be somewhat more stable. And generally speaking, what would generally happen with Vega, hopefully you can see this on camera okay, but generally you would see like the frequencies kind of do like that after a few minutes, which meant it was good in benchmarks, which were shorter, but for longer sessions of play, you could sometimes see your frame rate start to dip. However, if you uh, reduce the voltages and keep the card cool, then typically the uh, frame rate would be more like that, and you could also overclock HBM2, which it would also do better. On the subject of HBM2, one of the things that AMD are changing with this is they are increasing the amount of HBM2 to 32 gigabytes. And of course, we have a much wider memory bus as well. Of course, if we did see a gaming version, there is the immediate question, well, would we even see the same amount of HBM2 for that card? And the answer most likely is no. Uh, quite simply, HBM2 is extremely expensive and most likely it would really bump up the price of the particular GPU. The way I see it, and this is slightly off the topic of the leaks themselves, so this is very quick, um, but AMD have a couple of choices. The first choice is that they essentially say for the, high sh for the, for the mainstream, um, we have the 580 and for the high end, we have Vega. And NVIDIA are going to be like, hello, we've got the 1180 or whatever it ends up being called for the, you know, for the higher end cards. And well, the problem is, of course, that AMD then have nothing to compete because let's say that Vega costs, let's say they could really reduce the price of Vega, which they really can't because of the price of HBM2. But let's just say that they could even reduce the price of Vega to like 500 US dollars. Well, let's say that NVIDIA then managed to release like the 1170 at like, $500 just for the sake of argument. Uh, I'm going to presume, and I don't know have the benchmarks to know this, but I'm going to presume that the 1170 would stomp Vega because right now, you know, you can make arguments about Vega 56 and the 1070 or the uh, Vega 64s and the 1080s, but obviously it would be a generational advantage in NVIDIA's favor. So therefore it wouldn't be really that much of a competition. Now, one of the uh, supposed leaks we had from Forbes and you know the article was that AMD were just going to be like yeah that's okay we're just going to release Navi for that end but I'm still not convinced about that 100% because it's an awful long time to go without actually having competition in the marketplace it basically means that you're giving up mind share not just market share mind share as well so what, there's a couple of theories, uh, a couple of well theories that a lot of people have the first is we will see 7nm Vega for gamers which would, uh, I guess at the very least, tide us over. It would be like a, a refresh. The reason this might be somewhat backed up is because uh, RTG themselves did say in an interview 
that uh, I think it was uh, Wang who said this, but he basically they implied, well, not even implied, they had told us that they want to release GPUs at least a refresh on an annual basis. So for them to do this, they could then release like uh, Navi in let's say six months to a year's time, and that would make some level of sense. Another possibility is that we could see a refresh of Polaris, but I don't know if they want to do that again, like another Polaris refresh, really. Unless, of course, it was something like the 590. The other possibility is that we could see Navi just release early next year. From what we're hearing about the um, supposed design of the GPU, it is pretty much done. And it is supposedly going to be, of course, used in the PS5. Anyway, getting back to the uh, Ashes of the Singularity results uh, in this particular instance, they're not that great. <laughs> There's a couple of reasons, of course. One, we don't know what the clock speeds are. It's most likely that they're still working with fairly early engineering sample silicon. Therefore, for all we know, it's drastically uh, underachieving compared to the final retail cards. And the second one, and this one's also going to be a killer of frame rates, well, the drivers. Uh, we don't know what the state of the drivers are, so therefore, because they're probably using very early beta and buggy drivers, obviously that's going to impact uh, frame rates considerably as well. But the main uh, reason that I find this interesting, once again, is the existence of these GPUs. And it does make me question what we're going to be seeing um, from AMD in terms of their roadmap. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.